Well, good morning, everybody. I just want to thank you all so much for joining in. Uh, we're so excited to have you here. We're doing our first kind of hybrid service, so we've you're, you can join in through the internet. We also uh, have the ability to park out in the parking lot and join in through 107.5. And we're just excited to, to uh, be able to worship with you this morning and be able to lift up the Lord. Let's just go ahead before we uh, before we do anything, just go ahead and like the video and share this morning, so that way we can help to reach other people. The message of hope that's going out, and uh, just so excited for that. It, all, all you've got to do is just hit the like in the on the left hand side and the share on the right hand side, and it's so simple simple and we can we can evangelize that way so if y'all will just take time to do that but let's go to God in prayer and ask his blessing upon our time together Father, we do come before you this morning, and I uh, thank you for each one. Uh, God, I thank you for the encouragement of the ones that I saw their faces this morning as they drove through the parking lot. God, I thank you for each one of them. God, I thank you for each one who's joining in through the internet this morning, for each uh, each member, each person, Lord, people that we may have never laid eyes on before, that out of India and out of other countries. God, I thank you for each one of those, and I thank you that the message of hope is going out. God, we just pray that you would anoint us um, as we as we minister in song. Lord, I pray that our hearts would be just tuned in to what you're doing. And God, I pray for Pastor as he brings the message this morning and just everything that's said and done would, that would just glorify you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Waited for this day. Gathered in your name, we're calling out to you. Glory like a fire, awaken in desire, we'll burn our hearts with fear. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the flood. A mighty river flowing from your heart Feeling every part of our praise Open up the heavens Open up the heavens We want to see you Open up the floodgates A mighty river flowing from your heart Feeling every part of our praise Your presence in this place your glory on our face, we're looking to the sky. Sitting like a cloud, you're standing with us now, Lord, and our eyes. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates. A mighty river flowing from your heart, feeling every part of our praise. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, feeling every part of our praise. Show us your glory, Lord. Show us. Show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us, show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. One more time. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. A mighty river flowing from your heart. Feeling every part of our praise. Open up. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. The mighty river flowing from your heart. Feeling every part of our praise. Flowing from your heart. Feeling every part of our
show us your glory, Lord. that you are a faithful God. Lord, just as this song says that 
you go before me, that you, you're the one who's fighting our battles for us, Lord. All we've got to do is just lean back and trust in you. You are our shield. You are our strong tower. You are the great and awesome God, and I give you honor. I give you praise. God, I, I recognize that there may be people that's watching by Internet or maybe even be in the parking lot or in the building who don't know what's, what tomorrow holds for them. They don't know from a financial standpoint. They don't know from a health standpoint what tomorrow holds. But, God, I hope that they're encouraged this morning that you hold their tomorrow, that you're still in control and that you go before us and that you're a great God, that you won't be shaken. Lord, as Brother Mark last week had talked about uh, the shaking that was taking place. But God, one thing I know for sure is that you are the rock, a firm foundation, and you won't be shaken. And I thank you for that, Jesus. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken great are you lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken
Hallelujah. Lord, when I consider your goodness, when I consider your greatness, Lord, I just bow down in reverence and declare, great are you. Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing great are you Lord and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great where you're at there in your living room out in your car wherever you may be just take a couple of seconds and just think about the Lord and think about his goodness think about what he's done for you you may say well Nathan he hasn't done anything for me yes he has he sustained you this long I remember whenever I was still out in sin you know you may think well I, God wasn't doing anything but I think about how many times I could have died how many times that I could have oh deed and and this and that but god sustained me god kept care of me and now i can say that the lord has saved me that he took a sinner who was without hope and he gave me life and now i can live in him and and the way that i pay him back just like the ones that he healed of leprosy then the, the ten that he healed the one that came back got at his feet and worshiped him and he said weren't there ten of you be that one that comes back and says, Great are you, Lord. Great is your faithfulness, Jesus. Hallelujah. You've been so, so good to me. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's your breath in my lungs. So I pour out my praise. I pour out my praise. It's your breath in my lungs. So I pour out my praise to you only. It's your breath that fills up my lungs. Hallelujah. Thank you for life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That, that old hymn, and I haven't practiced it, so I don't know if we can even do it, but that saw that hymn came to my mind last night that he touched me. He touched me. Something wonderful happened when he touched me. And I'm just so thankful for the Lord's touch. And Pastor, you can come on because I know I would, I would butcher it because we haven't practiced it. But that, that I encourage you, that hymn, that something wonderful happened. And now I know that he touched me and made me whole. Hallelujah. Thank you for that, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all oh, the joy that floods my soul. Trust me. 
Wherever you are, he can touch you right now. And in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Touch your people today, Lord. We're gathered in different places, but together in heart and mind and soul. I pray, God, that right now you would touch each person, Lord, touch their life, God, whatever's going on in their lives. Lord, there may be some that are sick today. I pray, Lord, that you touch them with that healing touch today. God, there may be some that are discouraged or depressed or overcome with the situations, with anxiety. Lord, touch them right now and give them peace, Lord. Give them peace that surpasses all understanding. God, whatever the needs are, Lord, touch our lives today. We need a fresh touch from you. We praise you, Lord, and we love you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for that touch in our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. We welcome you to the service today. There are some that are joining us out in the parking lot here and uh, listening on the radio and uh, here locally uh, within the parking lot, actually 107.5. So if you want to join us in person, um, then we're starting to do this each week uh, that we're going to have the service still live stream as we're doing here in the sanctuary. But if you want to join and be uh, together with others, then you can join us here in person. You can watch it online with your phone whatever means that that you have but we want to just continue to offer up the ability to to be able to gather together and and to uh, share the love of God with one another we praise God for what he's doing and uh, for what his plans are they're they're greater than our plans and they're higher than our thoughts and so God's got something he's doing during this time and we just have to trust him and so praise the Lord for that. And I want to uh, ask uh, Dylan and Savannah and Cade and Finn, if they'll come up here to the front, uh, they're joining with us this morning as uh, Dylan is going to be leaving next Sunday, going into basic training in the military. And so uh, I asked them to come this morning. We want to have a word of prayer with you. Come on up here on the stage if you don't mind. And, and uh, so we were singing that second song, The God of Angel Armies is always by our side. And uh, we're proud of you, Dylan, and Savannah, and Cade, and Finn, and, and uh, just bless this family. What a blessing you all are. We love you guys. And uh, we're going to pray over you, God's protection, God's watching over you. God's going to take care of you. God's got all these things all under control. And uh, Dylan leaves next Sunday for... Oklahoma and we'll be there for six weeks, 10 weeks, 10 weeks. And then we're going to Texas and then Savannah and the children will be joining you at that time, right? Okay. So if you will, if you will just join with us right now, we're going to pray over them that God does watch over them and protects them and gives them strength, gives them grace and, and, and just blesses them during this time. It's a brave person that will go and fight. It's a brave person that will join and fight for what's right. And we appreciate you, Dylan and Savannah, both of you and your children. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for Dylan and Savannah and God, for these boys, God, that you've blessed them. Lord, as we've watched Dylan grow throughout the years, God, and how that your hand is upon him. And Lord, as he's now married, and Savannah's now come into our lives too. And, and uh, we just thank you, God, for this family, Lord, these little babies, Cade and Finn, and God, how you're blessing this family. And we just thank you, Lord, for the blessings that they are. God, I pray, Lord, for your protective hand to be over them. I pray, God, that you would watch over them day and night, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of their lives, Lord. God, that you would protect them from harm, 
God, that you would watch over them and give them your grace when it seems to be difficult and, 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 and trying. Lord, give them your grace. And, and Lord, let them know that you're always with them, no matter where they are, no matter where Dylan goes and travels throughout the world. Lord, let him always realize that you are with him. And I pray, God, that you would use him in the military. God, use him in a powerful way as a witness of your love and your grace to others. God, that you would raise him up and, and do what you want to accomplish in him and his life. And God, I know a few couple years ago, I believe he was hearing the ministry call in his life. And God, maybe this is something that you're going to use through the military, maybe chaplaincy or whatever it may be, God. We just put it in your hands, Lord. You know the future. But I do pray, God, that you would just bless them and, and strengthen them and encourage them and let them let be a light wherever they go. We pray for Savannah, God, as she's going to be moving and leaving from her family here, God. Just let her always know that, that she is loved, that we love them, and that their families love them, and, God, that you love them. Lord, let them go in your peace. Let them go in your strength and your grace, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. They're going to be standing outside at the end of service for those that are here that would like to speak with them. And uh, Saturday, they're also going to be having a drive by here at 2 o'clock at the church for anybody that would like to come by and personally uh, wish them uh, their best and pray for them and bless them. And, and we love you guys, and we're proud of you. And what, we're going to continue to pray for you. Whatever we can do for you, we're here, okay? All right. God bless you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. If you're on the video, I would on Facebook, uh, if you would, uh, just share with others. You can go on there, and at the bottom it will say share. Click share, and then it has write post, W-R-I-T-E, post. Click on that, and then uh, click post, and then it will share out with all your friends and, and your family that you're friends with on Facebook. But let's get the, the word of God out there, uh, and let's share it with others. Uh, it's it's a, a, a time now that people that are uh, paying, I believe, attention to the things that are happening. And we have the opportunity to share hope. I'm so, uh, so, 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 such a blessing last weekend, the weekend of hope, as uh, Mark Mitchell came and shared the word of God and Jared Morrell came and spoke and powerful services, powerful things. And I got a, a message from Mark on Monday that they were already getting responses at Tri-Cities Recovery to the weekend. And, and uh, we just thank the Lord for that. And we're believing that God is going to do something awesome from that weekend. And uh, if you have facebook or you're on our website and you want to share it on youtube however you want to share it but but continue to spread the message of hope as it was said last week i think it was nathan that said this be a hope dealer let's be a hope dealer and, and share the hope that we have with one another uh, if you will turn in your bibles today to psalm 30 verse number five uh, we're going to read from there and uh, i've got a message for us today i believe the lord has laid on my heart uh, that, that God, I believe, wants to encourage us and to help us to realize that he's got something remarkable in store. Psalm 30, verse number 5, says, For his anger endureth for a moment, but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Praise God. I want to read that again. Psalm 30, verse 5. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, that you are a God of hope, that you are a God that is going to see us through these things and these times that we're living in. And, Lord, I believe that it may be dark right now, but God, I believe that we're going to be able to endure through these times by your grace. And I believe that joy is coming in the morning time. Lord, you've got something re remarkable in store, God. And we're just trusting you and believing you for you to do your will. God, use us however you choose. God, I pray if there's anybody that's listening, watching today, that doesn't know you as their Savior, Lord, save their souls. 
turn their lives completely around God. Lord, if there's somebody that's strayed away from you and they, they're, they're, they're just backslidden and they're not right with you and they've just turned their back, Lord, get their attention and draw them to you, Lord. And God, for, for those who are, are just following you and loving you, Lord, just bless and encourage each of us, Lord, that we would just grow stronger and stronger in our faith. And Lord, use us for your glory. God, anoint us today, anoint everything that's done, and we ask this in Jesus' name, amen, amen. We're living in a remarkable time, and that's the title sermon today, it's remarkable. Uh, remarkable is un unusual things, and, and things that are memorable, and in time to come, we'll look back at this year and this time, and we'll remember 2020. We'll remember what we've gone through during this time. It's one of those remarkable things. We'll even talk about it, the coronavirus in 2020. It's something that, uh, remarkable is something that is noteworthy, and it's something that's unusual. It's unique. It's something that's extraordinary, and something which uh, we really start talking and making remarks about. We can go back in time and we can say, well, I remember when 9-11 took place and what happened at that time. That was a remarkable event. And we'll look back at this time and we'll remember and we'll make remarks about this time as well. And I say that by faith because I believe we're going to make it through this time. And I declare that over us. We're going to make it through this time. And I'm so glad. We've been praying for God's protective hand over the church and over our families and over our workplaces and different things. And thus far, praise the Lord. And I believe through it all, nobody has been afflicted with this. And I'm declaring that still, that everybody is going to remain well through this time. I believe that this is going to be what is going to happen. I can imagine all, all of us uh, uh, talking in the future. The year 2020 was when the coronavirus hit the world. We'll be making statements like this. The economy was a wreck. Businesses were shut down. The government sent us money. It was a national emergency. New York City, they were, they were uh, setting up the ships and, and tents because the virus was so bad. It was hit so hard. We had to stay in our houses. We had to social distance from one another. And I believe we'll even joke about people hoarding toilet paper and all those types of things as we look back at this time because it is a remarkable time. But what is the other side of the story? And that's what I want us to look at today. And what do I mean by that? There are many times that there are bad things that happen. But just past that time, something even more remarkable takes place. And I'll give you an example. And uh, for those who have had a baby, who have children, the nine months up to, up to the birth of that baby, uh, there's morning sickness, there's uh, weight gain, there's feet swelling, there's having to go to the bathroom more frequently, there's becoming miserable due to the due date, as the due date approaches, can't roll over in the bed and, and all those things. And, and then as it gets close to the delivering time, the birth pains are even greater and the contractions are fierce and it hurts really bad, I'm told. And uh, I remember my wife squeezing my hand it hurt really bad, and, uh, but I know that uh, it, it was painful. And we can stop right here and we can make remarks and say those nine months were really remarkable. The pain was there, the, 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 the difficulty of the pregnancies or whatever was there, and all that had to be endured, all of the suffering, the pain of the delivery. But would that be the most remarkable thing would that be the most remarkable thing that would happen? What about the delivery and the birth and seeing the baby for the very first time? I've heard from my wife and I've heard from other women that when they, that baby is born and placed on their chest, in their arms, the pain that they endure, the nine months and the things that they had to endure just takes the back burner. Those things that have been remarkable up to this point is nothing compared to what is remarkable that they're holding in their arms because something more remarkable has happened. A baby was born. All of the things that happened prior to the baby, those things were remarkable. But nothing compares to holding that newborn baby that was just delivered in your arms for the first time. I believe that we're enduring 
right now. I believe this is a time of endurance. It's a testing time. And it's tough. It's tough to stay away in your house. It's tough to stay away from one another that we love or to be on the front lines that facing a potential sickness that could cause, that's caused others to die. It's tough. It's scary. It's fearful of not knowing what the side effects or all of the effects will be as a result of the things that's happened. What's going to happen to the economy? What about jobs? What about finances? What about getting sick yourself or losing a loved one? It's scary. It's also painful. It hurts not to be seeing, to be able to see others, and it's painful to not be able to do what you want to do and, and, and be restricted. But will these things be the things that are the most remarkable about this time frame? The things that we speak about in the future? Or does God have something even more remarkable that he is giving birth to in this time? I believe we could be on the very brink of something more remarkable than anything that we have had to endure during this time. Could it be that a great spiritual awakening is about to take place throughout the world? Could it be that the promise of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the last days is about to take place? Could it be that the rapture of the church is about to take place? It could be any, and it could be all of these things that God is about to do. And I believe that God is doing something that is far more remarkable than the virus and the effects of it that we are enduring today. I believe we'll look back at these days and the most remarkable thing that we will speak of is the move of God that took place during this time. And, 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 what is look, and, and looking forward to what remarkable things the Lord is about to do. I'm looking forward to those things. In the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, there's three stories I want to share of some really remarkable things that took place in the Bible. There's a lot of remarkable things. You can read every chapter. Every, everything in there is remarkable. It has significance. It's unique. It's extraordinary. It's powerful. Uh, but there are three stories that are in the Bible that I believe are very remarkable. And when you go back in the Old Testament and you look at the book of Exodus, chapter 7 through 15, the account of the Jewish people, the Hebrew children, are, is told of where they were slaves in Egypt. They'd been slaves there for 430 years, and they're crying out to God because the oppression from Pharaoh is, is very difficult upon them. And they're crying out for deliverance from being a slave. God hears that cry and he calls on a man by the name of Moses who's on the backside of the, of, of the wilderness over there tending sheep. And God speaks to him through a burning bush and he calls him forth to go and to deliver the people from Egypt and out of slavery. Moses and his brother Aaron come into Egypt and they go before Pharaoh who's the leader of the people. But Pharaoh, his heart was hardened and God had hardened his heart and he would continue each time as they would go to him to say, let my people go. And his response would be, no, I'm not going to let your people go. And his heart would harden each time. And, 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 and Moses appears before Pharaoh and God sends 10 plagues upon the earth. There were all kinds of plagues that God sent in their time. The first that he did was his brother Aaron strikes the Nile River and the waters turned to blood. Now can you imagine seeing or hearing or experiencing water turning into blood? We also second the, the second thing were swarms of frogs were overrunning the land. The third thing, lice was infesting all men and beasts and still Pharaoh remains stubborn and he won't let the people go. Then hordes of wild animals come and they invade the cities. And then a pestilence kills the domestic animals. And then painful boils afflict the Egyptians. And then the seventh thing, a devastating hail falls down upon them. And Pharaoh finally gets to the place that he's starting to bend a little bit. And he agrees to let the men go, but the women and children could not go. And Moses says, no, it's got to be all. We're not going, you've got to let my people go. 
And then there was a swarm of locusts that come and devour all the crops and all the greenery. And verse uh, the ninth plague that comes is a thick darkness envelops the land. Darkness comes. Talk about a remarkable time. Never had anything like this ever happen before. Out of the 430 years that they were in Egypt, there had never been plagues like this. There had never been these types of things that had happened before. It was remarkable. I'm sure that in that day, their media was covering this and spreading the news throughout the, the nation. EBC, Egyptian Broadcasting Company, the Crocodile News Network were spreading the news throughout the land. It was very scary. It was devastating upon the, the nation of Egypt. But the worst had not yet happened. There was a tenth plague still to happen. And finally, the tenth plague takes place, and it's the death of all of the firstborn throughout the land. The Jewish people were told to go into their houses. Sound familiar? Go into your houses, and they were told to take a sacrificial lamb, a spotless lamb, and to take its blood and apply it with hyssop and put it over the, the door uh, lintel and on the doorpost on the sides of the door. They were to stay in the house. And at nighttime, that night, when they had done this, when it was dark, the death angel came through. And, and, and if it saw that the blood of the lamb was over the door, it would pass over that family and nobody would die. But for those that did not have the blood applied over their door, the death angel took the firstborn and there were many that died as a result of that because there were many people that did not have the blood of that lamb over their doorpost. In the middle of the night, finally, Pharaoh gives up and he finally begs for the Hebrew children to leave. I've had enough. Get out of here. Go. And so they pack up hastily and they leave. And as, they, as they've departed, they, they're taking the spoils. They're asking the Egyptians and they're giving their gold and their treasures with them. And so they're leaving out of the place. And then Pharaoh starts to realize, wait a second, what's, what have I done? Why did I let them go? And so he grabs his army and they go out and they chase after the Hebrew children. The Hebrew children are leaving. And so as they come to a place, they come to the Red Sea. There's a big sea, and it's still Red Sea that's there. And their enemies are behind them chasing them down. And miraculously, the Lord comes down in a cloud uh, uh, by, by day and a pillar of fire by night. And his presence abided with them during the whole time that they were there. And this cloud that was there got behind them and separated the Egyptian people from the Hebrew children with a darkness. And the Egyptians couldn't see. They couldn't move forward because of the heaviness of the cloud, the darkness that was there. And God instructs Moses while he's on the other side because on the other side of that dark cloud was light shining forth for the Egyptians. I mean the Hebrew children. And the light is shining on this side for the Hebrew children. The darkness is on this side over here for the Egyptians. And Moses stretches out his rod and he points it out over toward the Red Sea. And a strong wind comes and it parts the Red Sea. And as the water is standing up on both sides of them, the ground becomes dry and they are able to pass over that dry land to the other side. The Bible tells us that the cloud is lifted and the morning watch, in the morning watch, the Egyptians come after them. And while they're in the place of the Red Sea where the dry ground was, God is fighting against them. And the wheels of the chariots start falling off. Well, when that happens, here they are wrecking and crashing and, and all kinds of things are happening. And, but then the waters that have been held up for the Hebrew children are now let go and they go back down over the Egyptians and they are destroyed. God fought for them and God overcame the enemy. And it killed them all. And remarkably... God miraculously delivered the Hebrew children out of slavery. That morning, the Hebrew children are dancing a dance of victory over on the other side of the Red Sea and deliverance because they had been delivered from slavery. They had been delivered from Pharaoh. They had been delivered from the life that they had been living that was tasking upon them, and it was a hard life. But God showed himself mighty, and he did something remarkable that they could look back, not just to say, oh, look at our years of while we were here. Look at the plagues that happened. But they would 
would look back someday and they would say, I remember, and you can read throughout the Old Testament and you can see how that they continue to speak about how that God delivered them and brought them out of that slavery that where they were in. God performed a more remarkable thing than all of the hardships that they had dealt with while they were in Egypt. Something that they would remember forever. The most remarkable thing. Now let's take it home. Because if you have ever been delivered from anything in your life, you can relate to know that those times up until deliverance were remarkable. And really things that we don't really want to dwell upon. Perhaps you were at your very lowest at that time. Perhaps there were things that were going on all, all around that were bad. Perhaps you were in the darkest place of your life. Remarkable times, but things that we really don't want to think about and dwell upon. They were remarkable things, and this being the lowest, and this being the darkest time, and this being where I was at the darkest place of my life. But God shows up. And that lost lamb, that lost sheep, the Lord came and found us and showed us and take, took us and gave us his mercy and he delivered us out of that situation and he set us free. Never to be entangled with that anymore. Never to be a slave to that anymore. But that we would now have victory in our lives and we now have walked into a new day. Weeping may endure for the night, but when the Lord showed up and he did something even more remarkable in life, joy came in the morning. What is more remarkable though? Is it the pain and the endurance and the suffering that we go through? Is it the grip that sin had on us that in the past? Or is it the time that God miraculously delivered us from our sins? When he set us free, I believe we would all say, oh yes, the other things were remarkable, but when the Lord saved my life, that was the greatest and most remarkable thing that ever happened in my life. And today I shout and I sing and I dance a dance of victory because the the Lord has given me victory over these things. The deliverance by God is remarkable. Another story in the Bible that we know of is the, in the Gospels of the New Testament. Jesus came to the earth and was born of a virgin. When he turned 30 years old, he began his ministry. He was opposed by the people. There were the religious people that hated him. They wanted him dead. There were many times while he was doing ministry, they, they wanted to throw him off a cliff. They wanted to throw stones at him. He had to dodge things and, and he had to show up and, and, and do things because they were set to destroy him. They did not love Jesus. And eventually, he appears before a crowd and they cry out, crucify him. And Jesus is beaten and he's mocked and he's spit upon and he's nailed to a cross and he's hanging there on that cross between two thieves, the criminals, yet he never sinned and he suffered on that cross like no other person has ever suffered in the world and he bore the entire sins of the world and the Father himself, God the Father had to turn away and look the different way because Jesus became sin, who knew no sin, uh, so that we could become the righteousness of God. God had to turn his way, turn away so that that lamb of God who was shedding his blood could die that death that we all have to die or have to pay for for our sins. His blood was poured out like that sacrificial lamb at the Passover. While he was on the cross, a great darkness came upon the earth. Jesus is hanging there on the cross Physically, he's suffering, he's in pain, he's in anguish. Mentally, he must have been about to go out of his mind with the pain and, and the guilt and, and the things that he was bearing at that time and dealing with the intense pain and enduring until the very end of his life. Emotionally, he must have felt rejected. 
He must have felt shame. He must have felt the weight of the guilt of sin. He must have felt isolated and all alone. And eventually he dies. And all of that is remarkable. It's remarkable to think that the Son of God would die on a cross for our sins and shed his blood for us. But is that where the story ends? Is that where the story is? Does it end with pain and loneliness and isolation and death? Does the story end in darkness? Or is God about to do something even more remarkable? Jesus is buried. He's laid in a tomb. And three days later, in the morning, on the first day of the week, Jesus arose from the dead. And he triumphed over death, hell, and the grave, and the devil is defeated, and Jesus has gotten total victory. Which is the most remarkable? The pain, the suffering, the isolation, the death, or the move of God that raised Jesus from the dead? The stone that was rolled away. Jesus coming back to life. And he lives and is alive forevermore. And he has conquered our enemies. Death, hell, the grave, the devil is defeated and never to triumph over us again. It's like the Passover, Pharaoh and the Egyptian slavery, never to triumph over, over the people again. You may know Jesus only as the suffering Savior, but there's something even more remarkable because he's not just the suffering Savior, he is the risen Savior. And he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He's not just a lamb that was slain, but he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he rules and he reigns forevermore. And he's coming back again someday. And so he has triumphed over the enemy. And that is the most remarkable part of the story is that Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the remarkable part that all of the things that led up to this time, all of the rejection, all of the hate, all of the isolation, all of the pain on the cross, all of the things that he had to endure was all worth it because he overcame these things and we can overcome these things He has the victory, and he gives us the victory today. Hallelujah. Praise God. You see, the Lord is working something even in the times of difficulty and challenging, even in the dark times, weeping may endure for the night. But joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. One other story that's remarkable that I I want to share today is in the book of Acts, chapters 1 and 2. Jesus has ascended to heaven. And, and he is ascending to heaven. And before he's ascending, he gives a commandment to the disciples to not depart from Jerusalem until they be endued with power, until the promise of the Father. Well, it says, but wait for the promise of the Father. And he is referring to the outpouring that was about to happen of the Holy Ghost that was going to come upon them as believers. So they went back into town, the disciples and the followers, 120 of them, they went into an upper room and they isolated themselves. They got up there and they were there day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, the tenth day. Ten days they've isolated from everyone else. They prayed. They were there. They were getting closer to God in that time of isolation. And I'm sure in their minds they were probably wondering, when in the world is this going to happen? I'm waiting. I've I've been patient. They were probably thinking that I should just go go on and just go about because it's not going to happen. And maybe they were getting a little bit stir crazy and just saying, I wish I could get out of this place so that I could go do something. Maybe that was going on in their minds. But I'm sure this time was remarkable. I'm sure that these 120 could look back to those 10 days while they were gathered in an upper room and they could say, I remember when we were all in one house in one accord together and we were up there praying and we were interceding and we were believing God and we were waiting upon the promise of what God had for us. Never had they gathered like this before in a room together, day and night waiting 
Waiting is not easy, is it? We have a tendency to get impatient when it comes to waiting. We have the tendency to give up when we can't see the end. We, only, we see only what we can see. And it was probably very challenging being there. I can't imagine, I can't imagine that, <laughs> I wish I could ma imagine, but I find it challenging to imagine that the church would come together for 10 days, day and night, and stay in the house of God and pray and wait until God did something, not knowing when the end was going to take place. I, I find that somewhat challenging. But I also know that in this time, as people are gathered in their homes and you can't go anywhere, it's a wonderful time to isolate yourself and get along with God. And it may be that when this is all over with, that God is going to do something even greater and more remarkable than us realizing and thinking about our times of isolation and having to be in the house. See, it was on this morning, something remarkable was about to happen. It was about 9 o'clock in the morning that God moved remarkably. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven that they had never heard before. As of a rushing mighty wind. Maybe it was like the wind that took place when the Egyptians, I mean the Hebrew children, were getting ready to part and cross over the Red Sea. Probably was because the Spirit of God the breath of God. We sang about it. The breath of God. It's your breath in our lungs. It's his life that he gives us. And so that breath of God breathed into that place and gave a fresh new breath of God to these people. There came a sound from heaven and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they left out of that place of isolation different than when they entered into that place of isolation. They were speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance or the ability to do so. This day was the day of Pentecost. It was a holy festival and Jews had gathered from all over the world to come into that place to celebrate the day of Pentecost. And as these believers were filled with the Holy Ghost and they came out of the upper room changed by the power of God, something remarkable starts to happen. Something more remarkable than their 10 days of being in a waiting period. But something happened in the, out of that 10-day period that these 120 that had been there gathered in one place in one mind and one accord, that the Holy Spirit was moving inside of them. They went out speaking differently than what they came in speaking. Their language was, was different and in different languages of people that had come from different places who spoke different languages, they were praising God and talking of his glorious works. Some thought they were drunk. These people were drunk. They're crazy. What's wrong with them? What does all this mean? And Peter, one of the, the disciples, one of the apostles being full of the Holy Ghost started preaching to them about Jesus. See, Peter was the one that denied Jesus. He was one of that re, who, who rejected, I mean, who, who departed from Jesus when Jesus was, was about to go on the cross. The other disciples all fled except for John. And so Peter is the one that denied even knowing him. But as he went into that upper room, and God started doing some work inside of him. And when he came out of the upper room and the remarkable thing of God, of the outpouring of the Spirit of God came into his life, he was not standing back in the sidelines saying, I don't know who that is. But he went to the forefront and he started declaring Jesus Christ to them. Something remarkable happens because when the people hear this, the Holy Ghost pricks their heart. Conviction comes and they ask, what shall we do to be saved? And he declares to them, repent and, and, and believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and you, shall, you shall receive this. You can be saved. And do you, do you know what happened? It wasn't just a one-on-one -on -one conversation. It wasn't a one to 120 conversation. It wasn't a one to 500 conversation. There were 3,000 souls added to the church that day on one day. Something remarkable took place. Yes, they had to wait. Yes, they had to stay in the house. Yes, they had to endure. But when God showed up, 
On the other side of their endurance, God was going to do and did something even more remarkable. 3,000 souls were delivered from sin that day. 3,000 souls were born again by the Spirit of God. 3,000 souls now had victory in their lives through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now tell me that's not remarkable. That is remarkable. That is more remarkable than the things that they had to endure up to that, pl that place and that time. That was more remarkable than the night times just on that ninth night as tenth morning is coming and maybe in their minds wondering what was going to happen. It was in the morning that the deliverance and the victory and born-again experiences of multitudes happened that day. The church was born. And God is still using the church, and he's still using us in this day and this hour. And it could be that he's isolating right now. It could be that he's wanting us to get along with him a little bit more. It could be that we are taking time and we're waiting for the Lord to do what he needs to do and wants to do and what he's going to do through us. Yes, we may have entered into this time a certain way, but I believe we're going to come out of this time in a, a more remarkable way that God is going to use us for his glory. What the Lord did on the 10th morning was more remarkable. The church was given birth. God gave the gift, the baptism of the Holy Spirit for all the believers so that we could be empowered. And the Bible tells us that in the last days, there will be an outpouring of the Spirit of God like we've never seen before. I believe we're in these last days. Right now we're living in a time that is difficult. It's a dangerous time. We're isolated in our houses. We're sitting, some are sitting in cars this morning, or you're sitting at home watching and listening to a church service all because of a virus. There are storms that are reeking throughout the world. It's predicted that the hurricane season this year is going to be worse than it has been. Earthquakes have been happening throughout the world and intensifying. Pestilences, locusts are still are, are, are in uh, the, the eastern part of Africa. Uh, there are nations that are dealing with the same problem. The world economy is uncertain. It's uncertain. The spirit of Antichrist is at work. I saw the other day, and, and, uh, uh, and I believe it to be true. I, I've done a little research on it, but I saw something the other day of where Microsoft has had a patent on a uh, device or something that could be put on your skin or under your skin for financial transactions and things like that. The mark of the beast, I believe it is, but the patent number of it ends in 060606. That's a U.S. patent number. I tell you, we're living close to something really remarkable that God is about to do. And so we need to endure because the Lord is at hand. The coming of the Lord is near. And the Lord is going to do something in this day, in this hour, in this time that is going to be more remarkable than anything we've been dealing with thus far this year. It's dark. It's dark. Wars and rumors of wars and violence has increased. It's a remarkable time. We'll look back at this time and we'll remember what all we had to go through. But will that be the most remarkable part of the story? Will darkness have the last say? I believe God, this is my personal belief, I believe this, I believe that God is using this time to do something greater than this plague. I believe he is delivering his plan and I believe he's giving birth to a mighty move of his spirit something that will turn the darkness of the present times that we are living in into something 
of light? Will it be the last day outpouring of the Spirit? It could be. Will it be a great awakening and revival throughout the world? I was reading where I saw where uh, uh, um, uh, the pastor of the church at Times Square Church, this deceased now, w uh, Wilkerson, had made a prophecy in the 80s that was talking about a virus in this year or in this time. And this virus was going to be devastating to New York. But he also declared in that that there was going to be a great spiritual awakening that takes place at the end of it. I, I, I believe that God is doing something. I believe that the Lord is up to something. I believe he's getting the church's attention and trying to get our full attention. And I believe he's trying to get backsliders to realize, get back right with God. I believe he's trying to do that. And I believe he's offering out the message of hope and grace and mercy for those who are not Christians to get on board. Come and get on, get along, get on side, get on God's side. Because Jesus is about to return. It's time. It's high time. It's a now time for us to get right with God. Will this be the church's finest hour? It could be. Will countless souls come to know Jesus? It could be. Could it be the return of the Lord to take his church away? It could be. I don't know for sure what it's going to be. But I believe that the Lord is doing something more remarkable than the present circumstances. There may be troubles all around us. There may be inconvenience that we're dealing with. It may be painful to not be able to be around others. There may be isolation and there may be separation. But I believe the Lord is about to bring forth something more remarkable. Hang on, child of God. Deliverance is coming. Victory is coming. Souls are going to be born again. I believe that our church, this church, the church, Adoration Church, is about to see remarkable things that will surpass all of our past and our present suffering. I believe deliverance is going to happen in family members that we've been praying for for a long time. I believe souls are going to be saved in our region and in the world. I believe that people are going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I believe that God is going to call people forth into ministries. I believe that weeping may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. Hallelujah. At the beginning of this year, I looked back yesterday, and I was looking at the very first service that we had in the year of 2020 of where we had gathered in a revival. John Carter was speaking. And I looked at that and I looked to see what he said because he spoke a word of prophecy over the church. At the very beginning, God laid something on his heart and he declared and said that this was the year of takeoff. And he was saying that, that, that there had been, that this was a time that connections were going to be made, that there had been efforts, there had been things before, there had been uh, layovers, there had been obstacles, there had been things that we had found ourselves frustrated with from time to time. But all of those things, the connections, were making the connections. I believe God's using this time and that this year, and he said, uh, and this is what the Spirit of the Lord was saying through him, that this year and this decade was the year and decade of takeoff. Off. And I believe that to be the case. I believe God is doing something in this day and this hour, and this church here will never be the same, but it will all be greater because God is doing something more remarkable than what we're enduring right now. Hallelujah. I believe that. I believe that. And I don't think that anybody can take that away from me. I have that settled in my soul. I believe the Lord has settled that inside of me, that God is doing something, and he's going to do something even greater, more remarkable things. So get ready. Get ready. I believe there are people who have been watching church services that don't go to this church. They're going to come in. I believe there are people that have gotten saved already. They haven't told anybody yet. They haven't told us yet. But I believe we're going to baptize some people when, the, when, when things start to open back up. I believe that. I believe that, that God is, is breaking off chains of bondage in people's lives. I believe that he's calling back people who have, who have grown cold on him or lukewarm and he's putting fire inside of us. 
I believe he's doing that. Something remarkable. Something to take note of. The exodus took place in the night as they fled from their houses. And that morning they found themselves fleeing from Egypt. But it was in the morning watch that God fought for them and the Egyptians were drowned in the Red Sea and the Hebrew children were completely delivered. A darkness again came upon the earth when Jesus was hanging on the cross and died. But on the third day, early in the morning, the stone was rolled away and he arose from the grave triumphant. The believers that were gathered in an upper room in isolation for 10 days. But as the last night turned to morning, around 9 a.m., the Holy Ghost was given. And God did something more remarkable. The church was born and souls were born again. It may be dark in our time, but morning is coming. Something remarkable is taking place, yes, but something more remarkable that God is doing is taking place and about to fully take place. Psalm 30, verse 5, we'll read it again. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping, hardships, struggles, pain, endurance, all the things that we're dealing with right now may endure for a night. But joy, something more remarkable, cometh in the morning. You may find yourself hopeless. And if you're not a Christian, you need to turn your life over to Jesus Christ. And if you will do that, yes, you may be at your lowest place, and yes, you may be in the darkest hour of your life, but if I promise you, I guarantee you, according to God's word, if you will turn your life over to him and surrender over to him and ask him to forgive you of your sins and you believe upon him as the Lord Jesus Christ, he will do something. He will deliver you. He will set you free. He will change your eternity. Night comes to morning. Darkness will turn to light. Dead becomes alive through Christ. But you have to give your life over to him. The blood of Jesus. Oh, that precious blood, that blood of a lamb that was put over the doorpost. That blood, blood that was shed upon that cross, that wood, as Jesus hung there on that cross, is a necessity. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. But I'm thankful that the Lamb of God shed his blood for our sins. And all you have to do is let that blood of Jesus Christ through the Spirit, through spiritual, come and wash you and cleanse you of all your sins. And death has to pass over you now. Jesus has already paid the price. Death has to pass over. Darkness has to yield to light. Praise the Lord. If you're a child of God, hang in there. <laughs> hang in there. The best is yet to come. Something remarkable is about to happen, and we will look back at these days, I believe, and remember when the Lord moved mightily among us, and not only among us, but through us by the power of of the Holy Spirit. God is going to do something more remarkable. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you are a God that, you're a God that is wonderful. We just wonder, Lord, at your greatness. We just are overwhelmed with your wisdom. We're just captivated by your awesomeness, God. 
Lord, as we go through this time, we deal with difficulties and challenges and hardships. You know that. It could be much worse. But still, it's challenging. Lord God, do something more remarkable. Lord, let us not look at the circumstances that are around us, but let us look to you, the God that is remarkable. Let us speak of you, Lord. Let us be empowered by your spirit. Do miraculous things, God. Show yourself mighty. Lord, there may be somebody today that's in a very dark place in their life. God, I pray, Lord, that you would minister to them right now. I pray that the Holy Spirit would just minister to them right now, convict them and draw them to you, Lord. Change their lives, change their destiny, change their eternity, Lord. Do something more remarkable than anything else that they've ever experienced. God, for those that have gone wayward, got caught up in the cares of life, got entangled with the things of this world, that have looked to other idols, looked to things, looked to the material goods, looked to their finances, looked to their health, looked to their jobs, looked to their independence, looked to the different things. God, let them see those things as all failing. But God, show yourself to them as the true and living God and do the most remarkable thing in their lives. Draw them back to you, Jesus. And Lord, for all of us that are living living with faith in you and hoping and anticipating. Lord, help us to grow stronger in our faith. Fill our hearts with joy and hope and peace and anticipation. We know that weeping may endure for the night, but we're looking for that joy to come in the morning. We're listening, we're waiting to hear our loved ones that have been lost saying, I got saved during this time. We're listening and waiting and anticipating for those that are bound by things that it was during this time that the Lord delivered me. We're waiting and listening and anticipating to hear the call of God in people's lives to step forward and do ministry like never before. Not to stand on the sidelines. Not to be ashamed or afraid or intimidated. But to stand forth like Peter did to the multitudes. God, do the more remarkable things in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need to pray, if you want to pray, if you want to play and sing, Nathan, Pastor Nathan's going to play and sing. But if you want to pray and wherever you are, if you're out in the parking lot right now, just look over at the car next to you. If you're there by yourself, look over to the person there beside of you. Pray for that person. If you're in the home there and you're, you're with somebody else there, pray for that person. Maybe you're all alone. Pray for the others that are watching or will watch. Intercede like Moses did. Let my people go. Be an intercessor. Pray right now. Pray the prayer of repentance. Pray. Thank you, Lord. With healing in his hands 
I turn to you, put everything behind me, and found the God who makes all things new. I look to you, drowning in my questions, and found the God who holds all wisdom. Trusted you and stepped out on the ocean, called my hand among the waves. Cause you're the God of all my days. Each step I take, you make a way. You're the God of all my days. I ran from you and wandered in the shadows and found the God who relentlessly pursues. From you, haunted by my failures, I found the God whose grace still covers me. I fell on you when I was at my weakest, and found the God, the lifter of my head. You're the God of all my days. Each step I take, you make a way. And I will give you all my praise. My seasons change, you stay the same. Because you're the God of all my days oh. in my worry God you are my stillness in my searching God you are my answers in my blindness God, you are my vision. In my bondage, God, you are my freedom. In my God, you are my power. You're the reason that I sing. You're the God of God of all our days. Thank you, Lord. The God of angel armies that walks before us, that walks behind us, that's all around us, doing remarkable things. Lord, I believe you're going to do something awesome during this time. Lord, let us realize that what we're enduring right now is nothing compared with what you're going to do. God, help us to endure till the very end. Encourage your people. Lift us up above the shadows of this world. Bring us into your marvelous light, Lord. 
We praise you today. God bless your name. God bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We ask you please to pray for one another. Share the message with other people. Be an encouragement to somebody else. And and look with anticipation. I truly believe that God is going to do something truly remarkable as a result of all these things that's going on. God is remarkable. Amen. God bless you. If you want to join us next week, come in by the vehicles. And uh, if you don't have, if you know somebody that doesn't have access to the uh, internet, some of those things, they can come and listen on the radio station here at the church. Uh, We're going to go now and speak to people and pray for them. God bless you. We love you. And if you need anything, please don't hesitate to let us know. God bless you. Amen.